on ice daily show my name is christina previtt i am lead faculty for clinical management of the fitness athlete pregnancy and postpartum we are an eight week online course that talks about all things female athletes so we talk about um, pregnancy and exercise modifications in pregnancy what women are experiencing as they go through labor and delivery and then into their postpartum return to fitness morning jeff and so today I wanted to talk a little bit first about an incredible female athlete who is still relatively early postpartum who crushed it this weekend. I don't know if you guys are watching the CrossFit Games, but Cara Saunders did an incredible job. I believe she placed seventh, which for her was extremely disappointing because only top five made it to, um, to the next stage of the CrossFit Games. But an incredible accomplishment for somebody who is 16 months postpartum. And not only that, but, oops, um, no. Uh oh, hold on. Sorry, guys, for whoever's listening on. I'm going to have to restart. I'm so sorry. We're going to. Okay. We are rolling on. Start live video again. My connection went. So for anybody who, hello everybody on Instagram, I'm sorry, my feed got messed up. Um, for anybody who is um, just jumping onto Instagram, um, I'm sorry, I had a, an issue with the connection, but my name is Christina Previtt and I was just talking about the experience of Cara Saunders with the CrossFit Games this weekend. And so she was rather disappointed because she came seventh, which means that she didn't actually make it to the next stage. But she is 16 months postpartum and front squatted 298 pounds, which is just an astronomical weight, not to mention being postpartum. The other thing is that she traveled with her husband and her child across the world. So she is dealing with a daughter that is experiencing a huge amount of jet lag and their whole um, schedule has been flipped and she was still able to parent she was probably not sleeping very well because her daughter was probably not sleeping very well because they were all flipped in time zone and was still able to perform at such a high level so she is so truly inspiring and i hope if you guys have a chance to go back and look at some of the archived video you can definitely see just how incredible of an athlete she is and I think that this is kind of the perfect segue into what I wanted to talk about with this week's pregnancy and postpartum athlete um, segment. And what I wanted to talk about was return to athletics, but talking about some of these other variables outside of physical healing from labor and delivery and reconditioning after a period of deconditioning during pregnancy. And that is sleep and stress. And so generally, we know just how important managing stress and sleeping well are to the athlete in general and their performance. We know that if athletes are not sleeping well, that their performance will suffer, their recovery will suffer, their rate of injury will increase, they're more likely to be injured, and the rate of perceived exertion of just general day-to-day uh, -day training is going to go up. We know the same thing is true about stress. When we're under chronic stress, and we know that exercise is a form of stress, it's a good stress, but when your body is already struggling with things like you know um, interpersonal relationship conflict, work stress, life stress, being in, in a pandemic and COVID-19 stress, that our body is experiencing that in a variety of different ways. And for my clinicians who are watching, I'm sure that you have seen people who haven't had a flare up in a musculoskeletal injury for years and years, and then all of a sudden they are experiencing this, um, this flare up. And I really talk to a lot of my clients, not even just my clients who are postpartum, about the influence of those stressors on our experience of pain 
And we, we know that Justin Dunaway goes through this a lot in his persistent pain course, if you guys want to check that out. And so what we see is that women who are trying to come back postpartum are faced with some unique challenges. So not only in the uh, postpartum period, but also in pregnancy. And in general, even outside of that space, we know that women are 1.4 to 1.8 times more likely to have insomnia or trouble sleeping than men. Um, everyone says when you're pregnant, get your sleep now because you're not going to get it when the baby's born, which is supposed to be a joke, but sometimes can be very anxiety inducing for individuals, especially because issues and disturbances in sleep, especially in the third trimester, are extremely common. So women can experience an increase in things like restless leg. Um, they can have issues with snoring and sleep apnea from the increased waking on their body. They can have issues with musculoskeletal discomfort in the, uh, the third trimester. They're going to have experience or issues with, you know, not feeling as mobile moving around. They may be having to adjust to a sleeping pattern that they don't usually enjoy when they are not pregnant. All of these things, not to mention the stress and anxiety of becoming a mom, labor and delivery that can weigh on a mother's mind when she is pregnant. If she's pregnant for the first time or she's pregnant for the third or fourth time, that it doesn't matter. Those types of things will weigh on their mind. And so what we see is that women of childbearing age report more fatigue and a reduction in well-being. And we have some racial disparities in that as well. So 33% of white women experience, oh my gosh, experience issues with um, this, with sleep while, um, sorry, my connection on Instagram is not going well. <laughs> well, so the racial disparity is that 33% of white women have insufficient sleep versus 45% of black women. So there's quite a bit of a disparity between that. And I'm, I'm not educated enough to go into some of the reasons and rationales for that, but we just want to be aware that there is a racial disparity. So if you're treating a black woman postpartum, um, she may be more likely to have issues with insufficient sleep. And so then when we transition into the postpartum period, we have women who are starting to recover from a huge, huge trauma um, to their body, whether it was a cesarean section or a um, pelvic floor issue. And what they're also trying to do is come back to sport. And so you every um, we can be aware that moms don't sleep very much. And especially in the early phases of being a mom, um, you can have a lot of issues with sleep. So we know that, you know, babies in that newborn phase are usually up every two to three hours to feed. Um, that is going to slowly increase. They're going to have increased amount of time during the night that they are awake or they're asleep rather and less time that they are awake. But every baby is going to be different. So you may have a mom that has, I call them a unicorn baby, and they sleep right through the night very early on in their life. Or you could have a mom who is still waking up and having disrupted sleep through the night up until 18 months, two years, five years, six years, 10 years, um, where you have a child that doesn't sleep very consistently. And so there's a lot of things that, that play into that and we need to start talking about it. So what we know is that individuals who sleep less than eight hours per night were 40 or 70% more likely to report an injury. And so if you're already recovering from an injury with labor and delivery, we are going to be oh, have to be aware of that. And so usually what would happen is if you're going through a period of reduced sleep quality, we would probably bring your training load down. So if I was working with an athlete who was outside the postpartum period, I would bring their volume down because I know that they don't have the same resiliency to recover from. In the postpartum period, this is interesting because we have the exact opposite thing happening. So what we have instead is moms who are not sleeping very well and they are having issues with um, with sleep and then that is translating into a, um, this is also coinciding, sorry, with a increase in training volume. So there is a disconnect there and we need to be aware of that. And so we know that athlete need, athletes need upwards of nine to 10 hours per night. And it's an independent predictor, lack of sleep of low competition, 
performance and strength numbers are going to be decreased. So we have to make sure that we are aware of that. And so what we need to do is make sure that we're asking our athletes how they're sleeping on a consistent basis because baby schedules can change. And clinically, we need to be giving them some gray zone in order for them to be able to modify their training program and make them aware why. So when I have an athlete who is recovering from labor and delivery and is coming back to fitness athletics, whether it be CrossFit, weightlifting, powerlifting, speaking to the strength sports, but even running, and I am doing programming for them, we, we program in week blocks. What I will say to my athlete is, if you are not sleeping, use, I use a lot of rate of perceived exertion. Stay true to RPE. Know that your body is going to return to um, higher levels of strength relatively quickly, as long as we have no pelvic issues on board. But also be aware that, you know, that RPE is going to tick up and down, just like rehab processes in general, because it's important to note that there is a huge connection. I do a lot of education with my athletes at the very beginning who are recovering postpartum and talk about setting these expectations around recovering. A lot of women want to get back to sport really quickly, and I totally understand that I was the exact same way, but we also have to be aware that this increase for risk, the fact that lack of sleep is immunosuppressive and it increases our risk of getting things like colds and flus. We want to make sure that our female athletes are aware of that and that we give them that gray zone. So if we start prescribing specific weights and we do, let's say we're doing a squatting program and we're doing a true linear periodization where once they've been cleared for exercise and they feel that they can commit to a program, you're adding five pounds. That may seem like a very realistic goal for a woman who is postpartum. And normally I would agree. But what we need to be aware of is that we may have athletes who, for example, had a baby that was up for four or five hours in the middle of the night. They had disrupted deep wave sleep. Their recovery was really poor. And they go into their workout feeling extremely fatigued, extremely beat up, and they are trying to hit that number. So what I would rather do is give them either a interval of um, weights that they can they can use. So I want you to go between 10 pounds less than last week and five pounds above the week prior, and then they can make a decision. Or I will use a true RPE and really uh, hone into the fact that we're accumulating volume over time, that your body is not gonna be um, always going up in a straight line, line in terms of recovery of strength, function, and skill. And we want to make sure that we are being aware of that. I also will ask my postpartum athletes regularly what is going on with their sleep because babies can be doing great when I ask them the first time and then they go through a sleep regression and all of a sudden our worlds are flipped and our recovery is much poorer and we are not um, doing as well with our physical recovery as we could be because we're we're um, having an increase of childbearing responsibilities in the middle of the night. All right, I hope you guys found that helpful. I was looking a lot at some of the literature on sleep in the postpartum period, and it's extremely fascinating. The fitness athlete is a very unique group where we are looking directly at their performance, and we know that the sleep demands of a fitness athlete or an athlete in general is gonna be higher than the general population. What we also know is in that early postpartum period, the more disrupted a woman's sleep is, the more she's at risk for things like postpartum depression and anxiety. So it might be a great way to indirectly ask about their mental health because we know that those relationships are quite strong and it can increase a lot of the stress that a woman is experiencing that she may be trying to cope with through getting back into something that she feels like she can control, like a physical exercise program or getting back to her physical physique that she had before baby. All right, I hope you guys found that helpful for my people who are listening on Instagram. I'm sorry I kept getting cut off in my live video. Um, so Alan's gonna kill me about that because I'm not gonna have it. But I hope you guys found that helpful. If you have any other insights around sleep in the postpartum period, I encourage you guys to comment below. If you're listening on the podcast, if you have any things, make sure you hit me up on Instagram at Christina underscore Previtt. If you are interested in deep diving into all things the female athlete, pregnancy, and postpartum, I encourage you to take our eight-week online course 
our next cohort starts in January, so it would be a great way to start off 2021, hopefully on a more positive note than 2020 has been at current. All right, I will see you all next week, and I hope you have a wonderful start to your Monday. Hey, thanks for tuning in to the PT on Ice Daily Show. If you enjoyed this content, head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. And be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram at the Institute of Clinical Excellence. If you're interested in getting plugged into more ICE content on a weekly basis while earning CEUs from home, check out our virtual ICE online mentorship program at ptonice.com. While you're there, sign up for our Hump Day Hustling newsletter for a free email every Wednesday morning with our top five research articles and social media posts that we think are worth reading. Head over to ptonice.com and scroll to the bottom of the page to sign up.